Hello, welcome to the Elastic Launch Slider video. This is the third video in a five video installment discussing the Science Olympiad's Elastic Launch Slider. This video is going to focus on glider creation, some things that you might want to change um, or to be aware of some of the parts and their functions on your Elastic Launch Slider. I am Ms. Holst and I am always available at holholst at gmail.com for any additional inquiries, suggestions, or tips that you may have. I look forward to hearing from you guys. I am always learning, especially about Science Olympiad. It's always expanding and ever-changing, so please let me know if there's anything I, I can learn or if I can help you learn. Now, let's talk about the task that we have at hand and the aspects of the glider, which is the primary portion that we're going to be covering in this video. Now, you have three primary tasks associated with um, the, the official flight of the glider. You're going to want to maximize the ceiling height, maxi maximize room width and length, and have optimal sink rate. Now, aspects of glider that can affect these things, the task, is the weight of the glider, the strength of the glider, and the aerodynamics of the glider. Now, just a little, re little review before we get into too much here. We have the parts of the, re of the glider, which hopefully is a review. Um, now, the first part we have is the wing, obviously the most noticeable aspect of the glider due to uh, the large surface area and probably what you're f most familiar with. Another very, very important aspect of the, of the wing is the aileron, which is the back edge wing of the glider closest to the tail. And remember uh, from my last video that the aileron is something that you can change about your glider. Um, the wonderful part about the balsa wood is that it's, it's malleable and you're able to change the aileron based on your specific needs. The fuselage is the main, the main body of the glider. The stabilizer, more commonly referred to as the tail, refers to the entire tail of the glider, but remember it can be broken into two parts. So the vertical portion of the tail is the rudder. The horizontal is the elevator. And we're going to get into that here soon and talk about why they are so important. And they really, truly are. So, talking about the glider parts and the effect on flight. First, you can see here, we're going to be talking about the pitch. Now, the pitch is something that you can think of that you would possibly do as well. So, the pitch is up and down. So imagine you are walking and you see um, a flight of stairs. You can either go up or down. There you go. You're affecting the pitch. By going down the stairs, your center of body is changing to a downwards motion. That is the same thing with the elastic launch slider. The elastic la launch slider also has, has a center of gravity, typically underneath the wing for my model, for the Freedom Flight model. It was pretty much underneath the wing where the, the plastic foam piece and the balsa wood was glued together. That's usually where the center of gravity is. So anyway, pitch up and down. Now this is controlled by the glider's elevator. And remember, that is a part of the tail that's a horizontal stabilizer. Now, for the yaw, yeah, we're going to go ahead and skip down a little bit. The yaw is left or right to the direction of forward travel. So, if we're thinking about you again, we are, um, we're walking and you can turn a corner to go left or right. There you go. You're changing the direction of forward travel. So this, on your elastic launch slider, the yaw, the left or right direction of forward travel, is controlled by the glider's rudder, which is the vertical stabilizer. <clears throat> now, the roll. This is a little more interesting, and I have a very helpful picture that I think will clarify some of this for you guys. So, the roll is the left or right, left or right about the axis of the fuse. So, um, 
one way you can think about this, and um, it's kind of hard to do it thinking about walking, but as you remember, hopefully, as a kid, log rolling down a hill. So if you're if you think about where your face was pointing, you can imagine when you log rolled down a hill, your your face was constantly looking in different directions. This is similar to the roll that also happens in your glider. So the roll is the left or right about the axis of the fuse. Um, your face was moving in different, looking different directions from your axis, your body. Now, this is controlled by the glider's aileron. Remember, that's the back edge of the wing. So let's look at this picture that I have here, and hopefully this will clarify a couple things for you. So you can see um, right behind the cockpit is CG, which is um, the center of gravity, and that's the center of gravity on the plane. So here you can remember we did pitch, which is up or down. You can see that's moving along the lateral axis. Next you can see the yaw, and one way that I have to help you guys remember what a yaw is, is uh, how cowboys say yee-haw. And usually they have an associated arm motion where their <laughs> arm is twirling around their head um, around the vertical axis. So anyway, uh, yee-haw is the yaw. Um, and like I said, that's, that's on the vertical axis. Now, here's a better understanding of the roll when you see it in the picture. This is moving along the longitudinal axis. So... When you think about it, you're seeing, um, if any of you have seen flights, uh, like the Blue Angels or something like that, their, their, their tricks, they can do the rolls where they do multiple rolls, um, over and over again. So they are, they are, uh, changing their, their longitudinal axis. So the weight of the glider, as you guys um, hopefully remember from my last video, I talked about how I made two, two different uh, gliders. One was about 4 grams and one was just under 10 grams, which, remember, it has to be in between 4 and 10 grams, guys. Um, so the weight of the glider. So the lighter the glider, the better the sink rate. Now the sink rate is how long it takes for your glider to sink to the ground. Just like if you're dropping a rock into um, into a body of water, a, a the, the sink rate is higher or lower depending on the density of, of the rock. Now, so the lighter the glider, the better the sink rate. We understand that. Now, one important thing is the stronger the glider, the higher it will go. So weight doesn't directly influence the height, but there is a correlation between weight and strength. So this kind of gets into that um, on the next page, talking about the different woods, but it is important to understand that you're, you will not be able to reach maximum height with a very light glider because it's likely that it will not be... Um, a more of a strong or durable balsa wood, um, usually associated with density. But, but yeah, of course, if if the if the glider is really light, then it's going to take a long time for it to finally loop around back to the floor. So the strength of the glider. The key is to getting the glider high, and I have read this tip on AMA. Best way to get good times is to get higher. So this is this is touching back on how you guys are going to want to maximize the ceiling height of uh, whatever area you're in for launching your glider. So the key is to getting it high. So remember, you want your glider light because it's better for sink rate, but however, you want the strength to be really strong because that's the key to getting it high. And so that's one tip that I can share with you is um, a lot of the forums and tutorials and, and tips from other science Olympiads that I have read 
is one of the, if you have to pick, usually it's the strength of the glider that you're going to want to pick so you can maximize the, ce maximize the ceiling height. Usually there's a strong trend that um, those, those gliders that have had the maximum height usually have the longest flight times as well. Um, so the strength of the glider is usually associated with higher density balsa woods. Um, they are ideal to add strength without adding too much additional weight. Almost all the kits that I saw online were all balsa. However, it's important to see that there are different grains of the balsa wood. Now, the sea grain is the most preferred due to its lightness, but it is stiff. So there's a little bit of trade-off with that. It could be, um less durable maybe for the beginners so it's stiff it's not going to be able to um flex or absorb any shock so you're going to want to be careful with that maybe um I would recommend a seed grain wood but maybe not until you're an experienced launcher should you be doing um your your full launches with the elastic So here is further discussing the balsa wood varieties that influence strength. So here in the middle, I have um, a great a great diagram. Here you can see that the pith, the center of the tree. Um, now this is going to be a really really soft, flexible. You definitely don't want any of the pith in your in your balsa wood. However, the rings around it, um, which are uh, places where the pith has um, grown, I guess you could say. So you can see the where the seed grain is derived, um, uh, dividing through the rings. Um, now the A grain and the B grain uh, aren't as preferred. However, the B grain is um, maybe if you're a beginner, you you could choose that because it is a nice. Um, medium between the C and the A grain. But anyway, that's that's an important difference to see. So if we reference back, you can see that the C grain has a little more of the horizontal lines rather than straight vertical lines with the B and the A grain. Um, and that's giving it some of its some of its additional strength and you're really going to want to look for that guys. Um, another thing to notice is that the B and the A grain almost exactly alike um, and so you would want to do some further research to see if you do have an A grain or a B grain but in from the experts that I have referenced they they all prefer the C grain so keep that in mind when making your decision. Now the last part was the aerodynamics of the glider and guys you're going to have to tune in for my next video where I get into the physics of the elastic launch glider and I look forward to sharing some insider secrets about that to help you get a wonderful glide. Alright, I'll see you guys soon and remember contact me with any tips, questions, or suggestions.